Hi guys, it's Craig here. Uh, it's the 23rd of December and it's the second day of me recording this um, writing my untitled novel every day blog. Uh, I've just finished a session of writing um, around two, two hours uh, this morning because it, it's a weekend and I had a bit more relaxed time to play. Um, and I also did a bit uh, last night, um, sort of just having a rest in bed and um, I mean, it, was about, it was not uh, late, it was only about six in the evening and I was just having a think about um, some of the things I wanted to do this morning and I, what I wanted to do um, was to write down everything that I knew about the, the novel so far. I thought I, I want to start planning scenes and I want to get a sense of the plot and so I started to write, well I wanted to write down all the things I thought big picture about the story um, but what I actually started to do um, just by chance was um, as, as I was writing I sort of wrote out a whole scene of very discreet um, actions and things that were happening which I, I never intended to, to get micro, I wanted to be very macro um, but it, it was lots of fun <laughs> and I can see how there would be there would be that want to maybe not outline sometimes and simply jump in because I didn't have anything in mind or I thought I didn't have have anything in mind and then suddenly this whole scene takes place with really interesting oh, not, I mean maybe not interesting but different reactions that were interesting to me that I thought the characters could have um, and uh, different situations they were in in different environments and I thought oh this is all starting to come together and, and within you know half an hour I sort of had 800 words um, spelled out of this scene and I thought well that's that's one way that you could go isn't it and um, imagine that's the way that um, you know like the monthly writing novel uh, competition um, in November and how their focus is on putting down a lot of words every day I thought well that's that's the way it would happen um, it, it sort of shocked me a bit that it could just you know, happen in that in, in that fashion, and I think this this morning when when I sat down to write, I thought the two things that came out of that experience was one, um, I just how much fun it was, <laughs> and it was really lovely to write action and stuff happening, and it's nice to know that that's in, that's in there and that's possible um, for for this novel, and the other thing. I'm forgetting what the second thing was at the moment, but I think the other sort of component... Oh, okay, so the other component was that it told me a bit more about the um, characters and the environment that I could then start to pull back out and, and get a bit macro with. Um, so I think that's probably how a lot of this is going to happen. Starting big picture and having a sense of general trajectories and uh, different, different flows that are going to happen across the story and then Sort of hitting this space where you just suddenly get very micro when you've got very particular scenes and actions and settings in mind and then you you know write about that and then you pull yourself back um, to the big picture and think but how does this fit into the overall planning so that because um, i think that there would be something that would be lost if i just kept doing that i mean it would be spontaneous and interesting but i have done that in the past where I've just sat down each day and really, you know, tried to push out lots of words and you, I, I've never felt it's been very high quality afterwards. I think what's been lacking has been this systematic daily pulling back to the big picture planning, which is what I'm spending a few months doing now. Um, so the other thing that I did this morning, once I realised that, was I wanted to get a sense of the different types of scenes that I'd be writing in the book because what I wrote last night was very action based and you know very much characters trying to escape a situation and I thought well that's one type of scene you know that escape action type type of scene but well, what what other things are, are going to happen um, I want the characters to you know talk to each other to um, you know I want to describe the environment the atmosphere but not to have anything that's meaningless or not pushing the story forward just for the sake of you know trying to write something pretty so that's what I wanted to, to break down and when I started to try to break and I know there's 
I mean, <clears throat> there's lots of descriptions out there on the internet of, and in you know reading books, writing books, and script writing around different types of scenes, the way to balance scenes in terms of you know all of a sudden action and consequence, and this takes place, and then what happens after. And I, I don't want to be too prescriptive about that as much as I'm being very prescriptive and in yesterday's film that I recorded here when I talked about um, just how particular I'm being with the outline you know the numbers the word counts even setting days of the week to get through particular things I mean that's systematic enough I think without necessarily wanting to do that to the scenes to such an explicit point and maybe that's wrong maybe there's something technical to be gained through being a bit um, explicit there but yeah I, I think I'm just interested to, to be a bit more messy and to play around particularly after writing last night and writing this morning some other scene ideas I, I sort of had an intuitive sense for what felt nice to me for how something could start what the middle would be like how it would end um, and I don't necessarily want to modify that if, if I read something quite technical about scene breakdown and they say, oh, well, no, you should really, you know, do A, B and then C will come. I, I, I feel like I don't want to really learn about that at the moment. I just want to do what I'm doing in the scene sense because I have a, a feeling for, for what, what I like and, and I'm just going to see how that goes. Um, but what I did when I started to write down the types of scenes that I was thinking about, I realised that I really would have a better understanding of that if I had a better understanding of how time worked in, in the novel. Um, and one of the things I was thinking about was that the, there's, so there's two parts in the novel that I talked about yesterday, the first half of the book, the second half of the book. I have a feeling that each of them is going to be about a day in, in, in length, even to the point where I was thinking about the three major sections of each part or the three big chapters in each half of the novel and I thought they're probably going to be around seven hours each um, in sort of real time in, in terms of what the characters will experience each of those three divisions of time will be around seven hours each to be around 21 hours so almost a full day I like the number seven I think it um, multiplies out well seven stages of life you know seven days of the week there's a lot of sevens um, that are nice to play with and it just seemed to take the pathway of the um, story nicely, I thought, um, in terms of those seven. So what I'm, what, what I'm saying is I, I had, was having a think about the time that would be covered across the day in the book and thinking, well, what, what are the characters going to do in that time? They've, they've got to eat. Um, I don't know if they'll sleep. <laughs> they may just keep pushing forward. Um, certainly there'll be things you do in the night and then things you do in the day which will be different to each other and it will dictate the sort of actions and the sorts of thoughts the sorts of places that are open in the early hours of the morning compared to lunchtime um, you know part one is very much set in the city I'm thinking so that's a whole other space compared to part two it might be something different I'm not sure you know, I don't want to spell too much out um, in, in that regard but those, those are the sorts of things that I'm thinking and I guess I'm thinking if you're um, watching this because you're writing your your own book or, or thinking about it um, what's helping me at the moment is to have a sense of time and to get a sense of the day to break it up into what you do at those particular times and then to think well what sort of scenes are going to take place there there'll be some action transition scenes in there there'll be some narrative um, narrative scenes that reveal particular things or particular ex exposition pieces that describe um, p particular things. Got a lot of flies out here today, which is why I'm doing all this. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm up to. And I guess the other part, the, just the last part I'll mention, is I was interested when I wrote last night and when I wrote this morning, because I got about 3,000 words of sort of outline planning down. And I know those words are very different to what the, the prose will, will, will be. And I've always been very particular about not wanting to bloat language out. I like it very taut, um, very, very quick paced, so you're not taking a long time to describe something 
that could be described in a neater, more efficient fashion. Um, but when I wrote the outline out for the first scene last night, it came to around 800 words. And I was thinking uh, what I was expecting the scenes to be word length wise is about 650. So fairly close to the 800 and doesn't matter if it obviously goes over it under by a couple of hundred as long as it's um you know fairly well pro proportioned um but it it did make me think when i read back over the outline of the scene um if if i were to convert that into prose I, I'm, I'm interested to see whether it really reduces or whether it even expands because i'm being a bit more descriptive without wanting to slow things down just because i'm just describing different angles and it's not a point blank outline you know whether that might even get quite a bit larger um i'd say both will be true there's particular parts of the outline that will be contracted and you'll see it and ra rather than having have it be de described in a very explicated way um, but i think there'll also be parts where they are sort of much bigger in terms of the description that's needed to really fill in the gaps for the reader because you know it's not just me thinking about an outline in my own head um, so that will be interesting because it didn't feel like a lot much space you know 650 words is not a lot of space um, which on one hand feels nice because it's nice not to think oh my gosh how am I going to fill each scene but on the other hand you don't want to be too restricted in terms of thinking I've got to fit everything within a small space and in doing that you lose something in the writing and the description and it might become a bit con confusing if you're trying to jam too much in a short a short piece um, but those those are technical things to work out later at the moment I still like the whole um, you know way that those are stacked out in terms of scenes acts chapters parts of the novel so I'll um, keep those proportioned how they are for the time being I'll keep planning tomorrow's gonna be more planning more building out the scenes um, I got probably the first two scenes of the book sort of planned out this morning um so there's a, a whole bunch more to go from there um yeah so thank you very much for watching and i'm going to write up a bit of a summary of this on the blog now um it's been a nice two hours writing this morning and i will see you tomorrow morning have a nice day